Third graders ask a lot of questions. <laughs> one day, one of my students, we'll call him John, came up to me and said, you know, Mrs. Pelletier, I probably asked about 300 questions today. I'd like to tell you he was exaggerating, but his estimate was probably accurate. <laughs> John loved asking questions. But that's okay, though, because one of my favorite things about being a teacher is when a student comes up to me and asks me a question that I don't know the answer to. My typical response is, you know, I don't know the answer to that, but I do know some things we could do to figure it out. In that moment, it's like a light bulb goes off and children begin to see the joy in answering their own questions. Now, I can't say this was always the case. When I first started teaching, I thought I had to have the answer to any question a child could possibly ask. Not only was that unrealistic, but it also wasn't beneficial to my students or myself. Children are so naturally curious. They strive each day to find out what things mean and how things work. Providing them with tools to answer their own questions is far more valuable than just giving them the answers. We live in a society where it's predicted that knowledge is doubling every 12 hours. And innovations in technology have changed the world as we know it. We can no longer teach as we always have. We need to change our methods to provide our students with the skills that they need to thoughtfully engage with the world around them. Historically, the purpose of schools has been to prepare students for the workforce. With new workforce demands and an ever-changing social landscape, schools need to change our approach as well. Inquiry-based instruction is a style of teaching that I use in my classroom because it naturally taps into students' curiosity and interests. As a part of this method, students are taught how to ask and answer their own questions, individually or as a part of teams. I strongly believe that inquiry-based instruction is the best way to naturally foster six integral skills. Today's learners need to think critically, ask pertinent questions, Find innovative solutions to complex problems, collaborate with others, communicate effectively, and become resilient in the face of setbacks. These skills should be nurtured when student curiosity is at its peak and the excitement of discovery is still fresh. Ideally, this work would begin as early as pre-K or kindergarten. If we truly want to make an impact on our learners, these skills need to be an integrated and routine part of schools and curriculums. What we prioritize as teachers will help shape our students into future leaders. Inquiry-based education provides a perfect opportunity for authentic skill development. I'd like to share an example from one inquiry unit in my classroom that showcases how naturally these six skills develop over the course of the exploration. My students this past year were obsessed with the Wild Robot series. So much so that it convinced me to read all three books in the course of the year. If you know anything about these books, you know they're not just a story about a lovable robot who gets stranded on an island and has to adapt to her environment becoming wild. They also teach powerful lessons about our world, environment, and animals. The third book of this series focuses on the impact of the pollution. At the same time we were reading this book, we were also discussing some local habitats. My students began voicing some concerns about one of our local habitats, the Scarborough Marsh, noting that as they drove by with their families, they were seeing an increase in litter. They began by asking questions, like, why is there more litter there? Are other types of pollution evident, and how can we help? Seeing that this was a point of interest for the class, and knowing that I had an open-ended Lego Cody unit approaching, I decided to combine the two ideas into an inquiry unit. The class was tasked with finding an innovative solution to the complex problem of how to keep wetland habitats, like our Scarborough Marsh, free and clear of pollutants. Students began by thinking critically about their questions. Before they could consider possible solutions, they needed to understand the problem a little bit better. Working collaboratively, the class used research tools they were taught to collect information and discovered that water pollution in the foil form of oil runoff and litter were two main problems that habitats like our local wetland habitat could face. Once they had a better idea of the problems, they formed teams that brainstormed possible solutions that could be engineered. Communicating amongst themselves, they needed to design, build, and code a LEGO creation. Teams persevered through many setbacks as they discovered that our LEGO kits had a limited number of each type of brick. The idea they began with might not have been the one that they ended with. Over the course of the exploration, they had to adapt their build many different times. But by the time they were finished, every team had completed an innovative design 
in hopes of solving these complex problems. My favorite was when the teams created pollution detection stations in which they coated a light board on the front. When a pollutant brick would go underneath, it would light up red, showing filtration was needed. If a natural brick passed underneath, it would show up green, knowing the water was clean and needed no filtration. The best part of this unit was that students took the lead. The inquiry-based instruction gave them ownership. Driven by their curiosity, they did all of the research, planning, designing, building, and coding. All the while, they engaged in the six essential skills. Communication, perseverance, innovation, collaboration, critical thinking, and questioning. I didn't need to do any specific instruction on any of these skills. They occurred naturally throughout the exploration. I aided the study by providing feedback and asking open questions. But the students did the hard work. And this was just one unit, in one classroom, in one school, in the state. Think about the impact that we could have on the students of Maine if this was a more widely recognized instructional method in schools and curricular programs. For this to work, teachers need professional development, support, and the ability to observe other teachers putting inquiry-based instruction into practice. Like our students, we often learn best by observing our peers. Teachers need to see that inquiry-based instruction is not just one more thing, but it's a vehicle to make learning more powerful. By putting ownership into the hands of our students, we get a chance to step back and observe what they can really do. My advice is to lean into student questions, take chances, and capitalize on their curiosity. I might not recommend taking your pencil sharpener apart when your class is curious about why it's not working. <laughs> but then again, maybe I would. Because even though we did not get that sharpener put back together, <laughs> we did learn a lot about the pieces inside the sharpener that have to work together. We also learned that sometimes it's okay not to find the solution right away. It's often about having the skills to take the journey and finding the joy in learning something new along the way. Thank you.